Hey everyone, this is Daniel, and uh, today I wanted to share this really cool Lego app that I built uh, using Power Apps. And with the help of this app, I can now go ahead and pull some inventory information uh, about Legos. So um, one of the neat things is, as we know, there's about thirteen thousand different Lego parts available right now, and, and to keep a uh, you know tag on what name each of those parts are uh, can be a little bit of a challenge. Well, now thanks to uh, Power Apps and Flow. Um, I was able to build my own app uh, using um, HTTP to get some information from a, a API uh, and I want to share that with you guys. So um, for the sake of this uh, app, I'm going to use uh, all three of these, which is Power Apps, Flow and uh, Gateways. And so here's basically what I'm going to do. So in, um, in, in all these three, first we're going to look at what is this third party, which is Rebrickable, is a website uh, whose API I used. Uh, and then after that, I was able to use Power Apps and Flow. Um, so here's basically uh, my workflow, how everything worked. Um, using Power Apps, I was able to go ahead and actually create a custom data connection right now. Um, and that custom data connection allows me to send the text or the image. Um, then from Flow, um, I'm able to make a, a condition that if it is just a text, then go ahead and send that text using this API to, uh, I mean, using this HTTP action and I connect to the Rebrickables API and I get some information back. Uh, I've also gone ahead and included the, um, uh, the vision uh, so that if I can actually go and see what that part number is on Lego, uh, then I can go ahead and scan that using just the camera of, uh, of your phone, uh, your smartphone, and then using the uh, Cognitive Vision ABI, API, get the name, uh, the number, which is the text, and then go ahead and send that using the HTTP action and then whatever is the return I get from uh, uh, the Rebrickable, I get that back into the flow, and then flow using the custom data connection sends it back to Power Apps. Um, so let's go ahead and now take a look at uh, what I've built. So I'm going to now go ahead and actually take a look at this Rebrickable um, website. So the website is actually just called rebrickable.com, uh, and you can go ahead and go ahead and sign up for that website. That's exactly what I did. And then once you go ahead and sign up for it, you can go to its API. And in the API, uh, what I did was I went ahead and used the latest V3 docs. And then after that, you can go ahead and basically use any of these methods that are available. Uh, but the key thing is that you'll have to go ahead and have your own key. Uh, and that's basically what I did. Uh, I got the key from there. Uh, so once you go ahead and sign up, uh, you will have your own key for that as well. And then after that, um, they basically I went ahead and used uh, this get models which are available over here. Um, the one I specifically used was the uh, the parts one. Um, actually, the, it was the part number. Uh, that's the uh, API uh, get call that I did. Um, so once again, to have this to work, you need to be able to uh, set up an account with rebrickable.com. It's completely free. And then go in and get your API key from there. And then uh, the get is what I used over here. Okay, so now let's go and take a quick look at um, the SharePoint side. Uh, the SharePoint side, I went and created a very simple list. Um, this is where I'm just going to store the information. That just helps me to keep track of all the part names that were searched. Uh, I use SharePoint over here. You are welcome to use whatever you want, whether it be Excel sitting in your OneDrive, or you could put it on your SQL, um, depending on if you have uh, on-prem gateway, you can be on-prem SQL, or you can use it on your Azure SQL. Um, the place where you store the information is actually completely at your discretion. Okay, so now let's jump over to the app itself. Um, the app over here, there's a few things that I wanted to uh, show. Uh, the key thing is in the scan button over here, that's when I'm going ahead and making that API call. Um, actually, the, the, the custom um, connection that I've done. Um, now, a good place to actually know how to do that is the, um, the website uh, whose link I'll be providing. Uh, Paul Comzi did a fantastic job explaining how you can go ahead and create that custom swagger file to get that uh, custom data connection. Um, and so he's basically walked through it in detail, which is why um, I didn't take too much time explaining it, but I will be providing the link to this in the blog. Uh, what I'll also do is I'll provide that custom swagger file that I used. Um, I'll just filter out some other information from mine, you know, like the key and everything, so you guys can use that. Uh, but you'll have to just you know replace what I have with your um, uh, swagger information but then you'll have the actual Swagger file that I used, uh, which will make things a lot easier for you. All right, so uh, we looked at the uh, SharePoint uh, list. We went ahead and looked at the um, 
the swagger file um, in the app itself uh, like i said this is the swagger file that i created i went ahead and uploaded that as a custom connection and now that's the custom connection that i'm calling so if i go to the data sources over here you see this lego ocr version 2 that's my custom connection that i'm using and what the custom connection does is basically the, in the scan over here, you can see that uh, I'm making a call to this custom data connection. In the call, I am actually sending three specific things. I'm sending the part number text. So whatever is the name I put over here, um, that's the part number. I'm sending that over. I'm also select sending what is the selection that I've done. Uh, am I taking a picture over here or am I just putting in the text? That selection is also sent. And then finally, I'm sending an image as well. Um, once those three things are sent, that is used in the flow to you know, do a few things. Uh, first, decide which route it needs to go to. If, if you go back to that um, Excel spreadsheet, I mean, sorry, the PowerPoint, uh, you'll see that based on the radio button that, that I selected, um, the flow will know whether it's, it's just a text and should I send that to the HTTP connection or if it is a picture, then it needs to go through the uh, cognitive vision and then the text that we get goes to this API. So this that that um, this section over here, the selection radio, that's what makes the decision for me. Um, and then the image is what I'm also using, um, that if I do have an image, then let's go to the Cognitive Vision API, extract that image over there, and uh, use that text to go and send that to um, uh, the, um, the API. Um, then the other thing that I've done is whatever I'm, re I'm returning, I'm just temporarily saving that as, um, um, uh, as in my uh, um, collection over here. And that collection basically just returns back a very specific number, uh, and I'll show you about that. So now that we've seen the Power App, uh, let's go and take a look at the flow. So the flow over here, there is definitely some work done on the flow side. Um, let me go ahead and actually, let's, let's click on one which has succeeded, and you'll see what has happened. Um, so in this one, as you will see, um, the HTTP request was successful. And then what I did was I went ahead and got the part number. Um, I also got the file which was uploaded and then the get file type. So in this case, I know that in the Power app, I actually went ahead and selected text because that's how I'm able to find out um, in my uh, flow itself that it, it came back as the text over here. And then after that, I went ahead and created some of these variables because that's the variable I'm going to use to make all these uh, connections. And so over here, the in fact, this is a good time to actually go and edit that. That in the connection, what I'm going to see is that the, the output, which is the get file type, was it a text or was it a picture? If it is a picture, then we're going to follow this section, which is go through the uh, optical character recognition or the OCR. Um, it takes that picture and it transfers that into text. Um, and then what I did over here was go ahead and make that concatenate um, URL to make that HTTP call. So basically what I have is this is the URL that I use. And I'll go ahead and open that up so you can actually see what that looks like. So in that section, um, this is the concatenate because I'm, I'm going ahead and adding that body uh, or that... Um, the part number because I need to add that part number uh, to the get call and then I also need to put in my key information over here. Uh, that's why I went ahead and just used concatenate because that made it a little bit more easier so that uh, I can make I can just use the variable over here because uh, that's basically what I did. I used um, that section from the uh, concatenate and added in the URL make it makes it a little bit more dynamic. Um, and then now this URL is what I use to go in and make that get HTTP call. And so that variable I created, I just went ahead and added that over here. And then after that, I just did a little condition just to make sure that the flow is a lot more smoother. Um, what I get is from, from this HTTP call, I get a status code. If the status code is 200, which means that's successful. And so if it is successful, then go ahead and save all that information over to the SharePoint list and then go ahead and send a response back. Um, the response I send is I'm just sending the ID number uh, back and that's the ID of the SharePoint list. Uh, what I did was I only selected to send the ID back because on the Power App side, um, I'm doing a filter. So if I went ahead and put something away here, I mean, on, on this gallery is actually connecting to the entire SharePoint list coming from the uh, yeah, from SharePoint, but I'm just filtering it that 
whatever is the ID which I get from the flow, just filter that with all the items on that SharePoint list. And so the new item is all I see over here. Um, that's, that's why when I'm doing the return from flow, uh, all I care about is just to send that ID. So that's if there is a vision that is selected. Um, same thing is, is there if it's a text. Um, in the text, it's such a little bit more easier because I don't have to go through OCR uh, vision over there. I just go ahead and basically do the same thing is concatenate all that together using that custom HTTP call URL. And then after that, I do the same condition that if the status code is 200, go ahead and create that item. Uh, then I just compose uh, one of the items over here and does that uh, send that respond back to Flow uh, in Power Apps. So now that we've got everything working and I kind of walked you through it, let's go ahead and test it. Okay, so here I am going to first do one testing, which is I'll go ahead and add actually a Lego image. And uh, what I did was I actually kind of made this up um, with this uh, Lego part number. Um, the reason was because the actual part numbers are so tiny, they're so small, uh, that was difficult for my iPhone app to even go ahead and take a picture of it. Um, that's why, but just as a proof of concept, I went ahead and created this image with this text, and now I'm gonna go and scan that. So as it is scanning, um, it is now taking this information, it's going and sending it to Flow. Flow is gonna do all of that one you know, the left hand of the condition that it is there, because it's an image, went ahead and got the number. I just got the text, which is 3497. I got the text, sent that through the HTTP connection, got the data from there, went ahead and uh, brought it back into um, um, in the Power Apps section. The other thing that I should see is now if I come to my SharePoint list, and if I refresh it, I should see another item over here and that's the new item, and therefore that's the part number, 3497. So let's do another test. I'm gonna go and clear that. And let's add, say, part number 75. Now when I type it in over here, you saw the radio button automatically switched over to text. I just went and made that a little bit more smart. And now I'm gonna go and scan it. So now when I scan it, again, the flow kicks off, uh, and the flow went ahead and got the number this time it was it's just the direct text so we didn't have to go through OCR um, it went ahead and directly made that HTTP request to rebrickable.com got the information back and here yeah, it presents itself um, another thing is now if I go back to my SharePoint list refresh it I should see 127 and that's the information over here so that was just a really cool way to go ahead and build my own Lego app to get all the inventory information and it, it's just it was a really neat and awesome process um, to go ahead and completely make this wholesome approach that yes, I can, as long as there was an a available HTTP, um, I mean, available uh, API connection, I could make an HTTP call to that, um, send it some information and get that uh, my, my information over here back, all using Power Apps and Flow. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Bye.